In the past, I had made a video of how to make an interactive PDF in InDesign CS4. It's changed a little bit, so I was going to update that video at this time. So I'm going to make a new document first of all. I have InDesign open, and you can go ahead and choose File, New Document, or if you have the welcome screen up like I do, you can create a new document by clicking Create New Document right there. Click on that button. And this intent, the intent for our PDF, for my PDF, is to be viewed on screen, um, not necessarily on the web, but on screen. So I'm going to choose web, and the pages you can set up however you wish. Um, I'm just going to start with one page. I'm going to copy that page over and over a couple times. And um, my size is the big question. How big do I want it? And so that depends on you, what is this going to be viewed on. Um, you see my screen size in the upper right corner is 1440 by 900. Most people's screen size might be smaller, might be 1280 by 800 or 1024 by 768. So you can ch you have some presets that you can choose. Um, for example, 1024 by 768. You can choose that and you can modify it as you wish. This is going to be on um, portrait. I mean, landscape orientation because I want to get the most out of the screen um, so that it's not just a portrait with cut off edges. Columns you can set up. If you don't see that, um, you click on more options. Columns, margins, bleed, and slug. Um, I usually leave most of that alone. Just choose the defaults. It might change it around a little bit. So at this point, I'm going to hit OK. And so this is my what will be my interactive PDF. And so I'm going to just make some um, buttons at this point um, very quickly. And these, actually, I'm just going to use the the um, tools within InDesign to create my buttons and I'm not doing a very good job of that but I'll go ahead and do that and then I'm going to um, show the next step of making these elements that I create in InDesign into interactive PDF elements. With these buttons created in InDesign they are not really interactive yet they're just text and boxes that I created. I'm going to choose on the text box and actually I'm going to um, right click on the text box and go up to interactive and choose convert to button so in order to make this interactive I have to make this a button um, automatically my pan the panel comes up buttons the buttons panel um, so but I'm not going to change that yet I'm going to um, hold off for a second again right click on the object that you want to make a button choose interactive and convert to button and if you want to undo that, you can choose convert to object and it will be an object again. I'm going to choose interactive convert to button. Again, right click or hold down control click on a Mac if you don't have a right click and choose convert to button. So now I have four buttons up and ready to go. Um, next step, um, if you don't see all the um, panels that you need to see, you might want to go ahead and choose window, workspace, interactive for PDF since that's what we're doing that'll give you all the panels up and ready to go um, but what I want to see right now is the pages panel that's window pages the command key and F12 or control click key and F12 or you can click on pages here on your sidebar and I'm going to duplicate this page with the buttons already created on it um, there's faster ways to do this and you might find a faster way later on but this is just a starting point um, I'm going to drag page one down to this little square emblem. That's the create new page button in my pages panel. And now you see I have two pages. I'm just going to do that two more times. I'll create a new page and I'll create a new page. If you need to delete a page, if you create too many, you can just click on that page and drag it to the trash can and it will delete the page and give you a warning first. Or you can um, just click on the page itself in the pages panel and click on trash can and delete the page. So now you see I have four pages. Of course, they all say number one. I'm going to change that real quick so that each page reads correctly just so I know where I'm at once I get this up and rolling. It can get confusing. So now I have each page labeled and ready to go. And um, I'm going to go ahead and make my anchor point. So I'm going to select my text. This method, you do need a text box in here. You don't necessarily need a text box that you see. So if you don't want to add a text box, you can just add a, 
actually a blank text box, and this can be your anchor point. You'll see what I, I'm talking about in a second. So I'm going to highlight my text. You don't have to highlight your text, but I'm going to highlight it on this one. And I'm going to right click on it, choose interactive, and I'm going to choose new hyperlink destination. Not new hyperlink, but new hyperlink destination. This is where I'm going to go when I uh, click on a button. Um, your default might come up for type in this new hyperlink, new hyperlink destination dialog box. It might come up as type page. Just change that to text anchor. If that's grayed out, you might need to highlight some text. Choose text anchor. And the name of this is automatically named one because I highlighted my number one. I'll do the same for number two. Right click on the number two after I've highlighted it with the type tool, by the way. I'm going to go to interactive, new hyperlink destination. I'm going to choose text anchor and it automatically named it page two. Once you do that once, it's kind of an easy flow in there. Interactive, new hyperlink destination. Three is automatically put in there. Just hit OK. If you don't highlight the text, this is what happens. I'll just put my cursors blinking in there. I'll right click in there. I can choose interactive, new hyperlink destination, but it doesn't automatically name it just like the others. It names it anchor four. So that's okay too, um, but I just want to keep them consistent. So I'll just name that number four. Um, so now all my pages have a hyperlink destination on them. Um, so now I can go ahead and choose my buttons and link those up. So I can do that in the buttons panel. So again, that is window interactive buttons, window interactive buttons, or you can choose buttons right here on your side panel. And um, it automatically named button one, button one. So I'm good with that, but if you want to name it something different, you can name it home or whatever you want to name it. And it has the um, actions right below it. So on the release, once I click down on the mouse, it's not going to do anything, but when I let go of the mouse, it's going to do whatever I tell it to do. Um, you can have it set up so that when you roll over the button, it will automatically go wherever you want it to go. So, or roll off of the button. And so you can set it up so it's even faster like many web pages are. Um, I'm going to click on the actions. I'm going to click the plus sign. And I'm going to choose go to destination. I set up all these destinations already. And you see the destinations are listed one, two, three, four. So those are the pages um, that I chose. So destination number one for button number one. And so that's in this document. Ready to go. I can change my zoom around if you want to do that. Um, if you want to zoom in or out to something, you can change that. But I'm going to leave it just like it is. I'm going to go to the next button. Click plus. Go to the very top. Go to destination. Choose number two for that one. It's ready to go. Button three, plus, go to destination, choose number three, and it's ready to go. Um, number four, I'll hit the plus, go to destination, and choose number four, and it's ready to go. And one th other thing, if you're making a Swift file, you can choose animation, go to a specific page in here. This is a lot easier if you cho choose go to page if you're making a Swift file. Um, but for what we're doing, we're, I'm making a PDF, not a Swift, so I need to do it this way. Um, I can choose in PDF, go to next page or go to previous page right there. So if you have arrows and wanted to set it up that way, that's fine with that. But you can't really jump around like I want to jump around to different pages. Um, you can also choose open a specific file or view a, a Zoom. Um, you can choose go to a URL if you want to go to an outside web page and so on and so forth. So play a sound, play a video. So you have a lot of options there. If you accidentally click on one of these and you don't want it, I have video there. I can set up my video right here. Um, if I decide I don't want it, just click on the delete selected item action um, minus sign icon. <laughs> it's that minus sign and it will delete it. So now all my buttons are set up, ready to go. Um, I can actually test them out if you go Window Interactive Preview. That's Window Interactive Preview. Or just choose Preview in your side um, panel. And hit. you have to hit Play in order for it to preview. So this is a, a setup um, that will work with Flash files. So I can click within this dialog box, jump to page 3, and it jumps to page 3. 
of course nothing else on page three works I'm clicking nothing's happening I can go back to page one by clicking on these little arrows down here and and I can test that again that works but I haven't set up my buttons on pages two three or four so I need to do that um, I'm gonna do it the easy way you can do it whichever way you want I'm going to select everything all my buttons right here and I'm going to copy them edit copy and I'm gonna go down to page two and these are really not set up buttons um, these are just really placeholders I'm gonna go choose edit paste in place so they're pasted right where I want them to be next page page three I'll do the same thing select the buttons that were placeholders delete them choose edit paste in place and the last page, page four, I select those buttons again, delete them, and choose edit, paste in place. All my buttons are there and ready to go. I can click on preview now, hit the little play icon, jump to page three, jump to page four, jump to page two, wherever I want to go, you see it works. So um, it's nice to have this little preview, small, but at least I can tell that it's working. Next step is um, a little different from CS4. Um, so in CS4 we could choose um, file Adobe PDF presets and choose one of these presets and it would pretty much work we just had to check the interactive dialog box buttons in Adobe CS5 uh, in InDesign CS5 we have to choose file export in order for it to save correctly I'm just gonna first of all name my file test um, test PDF name it whatever you want and it's going to save on my desktop. Um, so it, your default format is probably set to Adobe PDF Print. You want to just change that to Adobe PDF Interactive. So choose Adobe PDF Interactive. If you're saving a Swift file, you have that option here as well, or a Flash file, you have that option, and so on and so forth. But we want to choose Adobe PDF Interactive. And now I'll click Save, and I'm going to replace what I have already set up. And so pages, everything's pretty much set up for me, um, but you can change these options around if you wish. I can go ahead and click OK, and I'm good with it. But um, I'm going to view it after exporting. You can um, view in different layouts. Like if you want to set it up um, to fit screen or fit page, you can do that. The layout, you can set up here. Um, your page transitions, you can add those if you wish. Um, they're just default transitions can't really change them around but you, know, you might want to do that I don't know and your compression um, how, what quality do you want this to be saved as so 72 is the accepted screen quality for on-screen applications for web um, but if you want to bump that up you can do that or you can even type in a number if you wish to do that I'm just going to leave it at 72 so I'm basically left all this the same if you want security you can click on that little security panel and require a password to open the document you can also require a password to view the document in higher resolution you can require a password for um, someone to ex ex extract pages or to print the file um, so you have all those options which you can change later on in Adobe Acrobat as well but you have those options right here if you want to go ahead and set it up I'm gonna hit OK and my PDF jumps up right here um, so you can see that I'm sorry about that you can see that my PDF came up right here and I can <laughs> I can uh, click on jump to page 2 jump to page 3 jump to page 4 and you see that all those pages work right there so it's ready to be burned to a disk put on the internet whatever I want to do with it there it is ready to go so hope this works for you. Um, please let me know if you've got any questions.